here we are about 58 to 60 days after transplanting. Uh, the crop is looking really good now. It's really thrived on the top dressing we gave it a good 10 days ago. Uh, the hybrid in particular is thriving, but the inbred as well is doing very well, and we'll go and look at that shortly. But we have a guest with, with us here today, Finbar Horgan, and we're going to discuss uh, crop health, ecological issues with respect, particularly with respect to hybrids and inbreds. It's a somewhat debated issue and we're going to discuss some of the issues today. Finbar, we're standing in a hybrid. There's something of a, of a feeling that hybrids are generally more susceptible to, to pathogens and pests. Let's discuss. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's obviously um, an idea, you know, among, among rice growers and, and among the hybrid producers themselves that hybrid rice has, has a higher susceptibility uh, to insects and also diseases than, than the, um, than the inbreds. That's come from a lot of the early studies that were done on hybrids. When hybrids were first released in China, they were very limited genetic background and most of them came from what was called the wild abortive uh, cytoplasmic male sterile line. Right? So, so basically they all were, were sort of shunted through a single parent. Now, early studies showed, yes, that they were a lot more susceptible to damage. They, they were responsible for an increase in stem borer damage in China, for example. They've been heavily associated with white back uh, plant hopper damage and outbreaks. Uh, and even other things like um, a black bug here in the Philippines. Studies have showed that black bug is more prominent in, in certain hybrid varieties. But as I was saying to you earlier, you can't generalize now about mm -hmm. hybrids because hybrids now have, have changed immensely in the last few years. There's a lot more varieties. There's a lot more um, male sterile lines, which are, you know, were related to some of the problems. And, uh, and studies are starting to show that, you know, well, really, there's probably not that much difference anymore between hybrids and inbreds. Uh, one of the advantages of hybrids is that because of their, their increased vigor, uh, they call hybrid vigor, they tend to be able to compensate a lot more for damage. So, for example, in the studies we've done ourselves here, we see that when we compare hybrids with their parental lines, that when they're attacked with the white black plant hopper, uh, they actually compensate better and sometimes you even get increased yield uh, as an overcompensation to uh, attack by hoppers. So one of the, the bad things that's happened with hybrids is that because of this idea that they may be more susceptible, people tend to use a lot more pesticide on hybrids. And we know that pesticide is causing problems. You know, it, it, it causes problems with resurgence pests like uh, the leaf folder, like the brown plant hopper, like white back plant hopper. So, so my, my take on it would be, you can't generalize. Certainly, what we're observing in this field this year, we, we haven't used a pesticide other than a molluscicide right at transplanting to, to combat the snails initially. Other than that, we haven't applied a pesticide. And what we're... Uh, Nancy's observations last week show that there's really not much going on. Uh, there's a bit of whirl maggot and even now that seems to the, the plants have really grown through it both the inbred and the hybrid we're not really seeing much difference between them here as and, of today. And this is an interesting thing I mean uh, we ourselves are worried about snails because the snail problem is very different from the insect problem. The snail problem is a problem of, an in, of a snail that's been introduced from South America into, into Asia it has no natural enemies. So it's very, very difficult to control. Nothing's controlling it. They're everywhere here. Whereas your insects have lots of natural enemies around in, in the rice field. Uh, lots of parasitoids. I mean, we, we put out eggs of hoppers and 90 to 100% of parasitoids uh, are parasitized uh, every day. Uh, but the snails, that's actually not a problem snail. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> this is a good snail. <laughs> They're good snails too. Uh, but the, the golden apple snail is, is a problem that, that is very, very difficult to control. We, we certainly had issues with snails twice. We drained the field to to reduce snail mobility and hence snail damage, but it worked quite well. We didn't have to resu resort to a molluscicide again. And you were making the point, Finbar, that snails are very much a localised problem. Snails being snails don't move very fast, and hence 
it's it's on a, almost by a field or a, a an area basis. So it, it is possible to address snail populations with extremely good hygiene yes. uh, and reduce the issue. Now getting that hygiene in your irrigation supply water, uh, drainage water and cleaning all the snails out of an area is no small task but it is one uh, avenue and I think it's something we're going to explore here at Hearing okay. shortly. Sometime next week, Arkim, according to the nutrient manager, will come out and top dress for the third time. He's suggesting that he will only top dress the hybrid because remember we're, we're setting a higher target on the hybrid than the inbred. So I, my expectation is Arkham will come and fertilise the hybrid only. So we'll come back next week and see what that looks like.